Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net and in this video, I'm going to diagram a singles point and show you what you can learn from Marat Safin and Randy Liu. Marat Safin, former number one, won two Grand Slams, I think one of the most beautiful two in a backhands of all time, and Randy Liu, who got to number 33 in the world, even got to the quarterfinals of the 2010 Wimbledon. And I'm going to show you this point. This video is courtesy of Matt Lynn. He has an incredible account. I've used his stuff so, so much. And I've put his link in, in the description below so you could give him a sub. So let's check out this point. I'm going to show you what you can learn. And then we're going to diagram it on the strategy board. So let's watch this point in its entirety. And then we'll diagram it. So for clarification, this is Randy Liu, former number 33 in the world, and Marat Safin, former number one in the world, winner of two Grand Slams. So let's first talk about the timing, the proper timing of the split step on the return of serve, and really any time. Unless you are guessing, like a goalkeeper, right, on a penalty kick in soccer, you're actually guessing left and right, there is a standard and proper timing to the split step, and I'm going to show you what that is. The proper timing on the split step, and a split step, if you watch Murat here, watch his feet split apart. See that move right there? That's called a split step, where your feet split apart. You move your feet apart from each other, and then you land on the front half of your foot. You want to be making that move as your opponent's striking the ball. But let's talk about the specifics of the timing. What you want to do is take off just before the opponent hits be in the air as the opponent hits, and then land just after they hit. So you take off before, you're in the air as they hit, and then you're going to land after they hit. And I'm going to show you why <laughs> conclusively, right? I'm going to show you why you want to do that. First, let's actually look at Lindy's serve here. Look how his racket's on edge. Strings are pointing off to the left. And then look at when he's done how his strings are now, and he has incredible pronation, but look at his strings now facing off to the right. So it's really important that if you go out and film yourself, that if you're right-handed, this is what it would be. It's reverse if you're lefty. Strings off to the left if you're right-handed prior to contact. Strings off to the right after contact. And that's going to be on a kick serve, a flat serve, topspin serve, slice serve. It doesn't matter. That's what you want to do on all serves. Fastest way to move the racket through the contact zone. So let's go to just before... Lindy, I'm sorry, Randy hits this ball. Now, I want you to look at Marat. He's starting to take off on his split, right? So look at, look at Marat. See him jump? So he's jumping and he's getting off the ground. Now, let's go to contact. There's contact. Now, Marat is in the air. Now, here's the cool thing that we can learn from this. And then we'll, talk, we'll start talking strategy. I want you to notice that as the ball is on its way to Marat, he is not moving. Why is that? Why hasn't Marat Safin started to move? This guy is one of the most talented. It wasn't for injuries. He'd be, I mean, he would have won more than two Grand Slams. This guy is an incredible and well-respected former number one player, right? And just look, he still hasn't even moved. The ball is crossing the net. Why has he not moved? Well, there's a very simple reason why. Because there's a delay in our reaction time. He still hasn't figured out. His brain is not figured out. Is it a T-serve? Is it an out-wide serve? Is it coming at the body? He hasn't figured it out yet. That proves a delay in our reaction time, right? That's why we talk about reaction time. Because it's the time it takes for us to react to something. And this is across the board with all pros. They don't move while the ball is literally crossing, or they haven't moved yet, I should say, as the ball reaches the net on a serve because of the speed of the serve. So what they do, what pros do, is they time their feet landing and compressing against the ground with when their brain finally reacts to the ball. And it kind of produces a bit of a trampoline effect. When he lands on the ground and finally realizes where to go, then they coincide. Watch this again. 
You won't see his racket move to the, his left because it is a backhand. You won't see his racket move until his feet press against the ground. Now his legs and his feet press against the ground and then he turns. It's not like he was waiting for his feet to hit the, gr- hit the ground. What he did is he timed his feet hitting the ground with when he knows his brain reacts to the ball. And this is actually learned at a very early age or a very early stage in your tennis. This is why you don't want to land your split step as the opponent is hitting the ball. If, if you look, if we look at the definition of landing the split step as that right there, right? So his, he's landing, his knees, comp- you know, his knees bend and his legs are firing. If he was doing that as the contact was occurred, well, all during this time, he would become flat footed. He would be flat footed as the ball is, is coming to him because he's landing way too early. The proper timing on a split step is to land after the opponent contacts the ball. So be in the air as they're hitting, and then you will easily land after they hit, and you'll be, t- you'll be synchronizing when your brain recognizes where to, the ball goes with when your feet hit the ground, and then you'll be able to propel in any direction, and it's actually a quicker way to move into position for the ball. All right, let's get into the strategy of this. So he hits a great return, and I love telling people to return back down the middle. So I love telling people to return in uh, singles in between these two lines and to really stay away from hitting the ball outside of those two lines unless it's a weak serve, uh, like a second serve. You can step inside the court. Um, You're really going for a shot to hurt your opponent. But actually keeping the ball between those two yellow lines is a great way to be consistent and actually sometimes jam the opponents, kind of what happens on this ball. So here's the return. He is well within those two yellow lines for consistency. Now, Rendy sees this ball coming to him and he decides to move to his left. But you'll notice his feet are slightly inside the baseline, but he has to move back a little bit to get into position for this ball. If you are moving back, especially in this scenario, uh, against a right-hander, right? Uh, uh, you know, a right-handed Murat Safin, if you are moving back, but you are going to hit a forehand, I would highly recommend that you go back cross court. Let me redraw that. That you go back cross court to stay away from a forehand. You know, Marat's moving this way. So you, you want to stay away from that forehand. You want to hit the ball back to the backhand and then establish, oops, sorry. You want to establish Marat over here and then you're over here and then everything's good, right? You're in position for where Marat can hit that next ball. But what he does is he ends up hitting this ball down the line. So he's moving backward. He's, he's, it was a nice deep return. So he's not going to be able to put a lot on this ball. And he ends up hitting this ball, what's called inside in, where he moved around it, but then hits the ball down the line. The direction that Murat's moving. He is in major trouble. Uh, uh, Rendy is in major trouble. When you move out of the position or out of the way of the ball, and you're now going to hit what's called an inside out forehand, where you're actually moving over to your left if you're right handed to hit a forehand, you need to hit this ball cross court, especially with that deep ball that came to him. He's not going to be able to put a lot on this ball. He ends up hitting the ball down the line, and the moment he does, Murat Safin is licking his chops. Oh my gosh, he loves this situation. Because now he has a forehand, and Rendy is on the same side of the court with him. See, you want to be on opposite sides of the court when you're playing tennis, right? So when your opponent is on this side of the court, you want to be slightly here. And when they're over here, you want to be slightly here. The reason for that, and I'll show you this direction, if... Murat is standing here. He has two directions he can hit the ball, right? He can hit the ball down the line and cross court. So Randy actually wants to bisect those. But with Murat being on this side of the court, the two directions Murat can hit are here and way over there. 
So Randy needs to be standing here right now in this situation, but he isn't because he hit the ball down the line. And so he is in major trouble here. So what happens? Murat takes, and you can see Randy trying to move over, but the ball goes into the open court. Randy can barely get to that ball. And what happens? Marat came in because he knew he was going to hit into this open court and blast it. So he immediately starts running forward. You can see him right now. He's leaning forward, running forward into the court. And by the time Randy gets to this ball, Marat is already up to the volley. Now, here is something that a lot of amateur players can learn from. Hit behind your opponent. When, you're, when you hit a great approach shot, And now you've got a volley that's on balance and you're feeling good, but your opponent is now moving into the open court. You don't need to hit the ball into the open court on the volley because your opponent is suspecting that they'll run over and they can actually pass you down the line. Rather, use the fact that they're moving into the middle of the court to wrong foot them and hit behind them. And you don't even have to hit a hard volley. Just hitting the ball behind them is enough to win the point. All right, let's watch this point in its entirety again. But this time we're actually going to watch it in slow motion. And I'm going to walk you through this. Here's Marat's split step in the air as the ball is hit. Here's Randy. Should have gone back to Marat's backhand, but he went to Marat's forehand. Marat capitalizes it. Uh, on it comes in and then volleys into the open court. All right, let's watch it in regular speed. So what a cool point to diagram. Just a few more seconds here. Let's check it out on the strategy board. Proper timing on the split step, be in the air as the opponent makes contact with the ball. Film yourself and see if you're doing that. So here comes the serve. I loved Marat's return, where we returned it within what I recommend as the middle of the court. Increases the likelihood that you make the return and you're gonna break serve more often. Now, because Rendy has a good serve and he's a really good player for, you know, got to the quarterfinals of Wimbledon in 2010, he falls into the court on his serve. A lot of your opponents fall into the court on their serve. That's one reason why you want to hit deep down the middle because you kind of jam them, which is a little bit what happened. Randy had to move out of the way of that ball. Now, I can tell you this. If Roger Federer had made that move, and we saw Marat moving over, if Roger Federer had been in Randy's situation, Roger would have hit that ball back cross court every single time, against a right-hander especially, going back to the backhand. You don't want to step around your backhand to hit a forehand but moving back while you do it and then hit that ball down the line. You're not going to have enough on it. Your opponent is easily going to get to that ball and hit it into the open court. It's a different story if you're stepping inside the court, right? It's a shorter distance. You're stepping in. It's a weak ball. You can blast that ball into into there, into the open court. But because he was slightly, you know, one foot behind the baseline, moving back off a deep return, you need to go back cross court in that scenario. He didn't. He went down the line and his ball only landed around the service line. So Marat stepped in and the moment that occurred, Marat knew what he was going to do. He knew he was taking it into the open court and he was going to follow it in. So he stepped in, he hit it way into the corner. It was amazing. Randy barely gets to that ball. Marat sees that his opponent's in trouble. Well, he knew he was going to be in trouble even before he hit that ball. He knew what was going to happen. And so he came in, Randy did a great job of getting that ball back. And because Marat was so far back when he was volleying, actually, Randy had time to move over and, and Marat actually used that against him and hit behind him. You don't always have to volley into the open court. You can actually volley behind your opponent to wrong foot them, especially if they are a fast runner. One way you can practice this, and I, I really want you to take advantage of this. Uh, one way you can practice all of these strategies is by finding players in your area to team up with people. I guarantee you there are people less than three miles from you who you have no idea they exist. You have no idea they're looking for tennis, Um, but there is a way to find them out. It's called Play Your Court. And I have a, a link in the description below. It'll be right at the top of the description. And this is how you can find evenly matched players in your area for practice, for singles, for doubles. 
It's normally about five bucks a month, somewhere around there. But if you use my link to sign up, your first year is half of that. So it's $2.50 with incredible instruction from the guys over at Play Your Court. Um, and you're gonna find practice partners to play several times a week for just a couple bucks a month. It is an amazing, amazing service that these guys give, uh, Nate and Scott. So please check out Play Your Court in the description below and find evenly matched players to use these extra exact strategies against. If you use these strategies, there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.